Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss about the losses and efficiency of an induction motor. So, if you consider the losses of an induction motor, so basically there are two types of losses. So, one is you can say the constant losses or the fixed losses and other one is the variable losses. So, the constant losses can be easily determined by performing the no load test on the induction motor whereas the variable losses can be determined by performing the block rotor test on your induction motor. So, the constant losses or fixed losses are those losses which are considered to remain constant throughout the normal working range of the motor and these constant losses can be further classified into so they can be further classified into three types so one is you can say the iron or core losses and the second one you can say the mechanical losses and the third one is the breast friction losses so let us talk about the core losses so the core losses can be again further classified into two types of losses so one is you know the eddy current losses and the other one is the hysteresis losses so the eddy current losses can be minimized by laminating the core so as you laminate the core you are going to decrease the area of that core now as the core area decreases the resistance increases and thereby the eddy current can be decreased and as a result the eddy current losses can be prevented effectively by laminating the core and whereas the hysteresis losses can be reduced or minimized by using the high grade silicon steel high grade silicon steel and the eddy current losses if i say w is we is the eddy current loss then it will be proportional to the square of the frequency whereas your hysteresis losses if i say wh it will be proportional to the frequency now the for the stator the frequency of the stator will be equal if i say f1 is the frequency of the stator and f is the frequency of the supply and for the stator i am considering or if i say f1 is the frequency then the stator frequency will be equal to the supply frequency and if i consider f2 as the rotor frequency and the rotor frequency will be equal to slip times of the supply frequency f now under normal working conditions the, the induction motor slip is of the order of 3% so the order of the slip will be of 3% and if i say the supply frequency is 50 hertz then the frequency of the rotor will be 1.5 hertz now as the frequency is very low so you can consider the rotor core losses to be neglected so the rotor core losses can be neglected as the frequency is very low for the rotor as you have seen the slip is around 3% for the induction motor working under normal condition now the mechanical losses are those losses which occur at the bearings of the motor so which occur at the bearings of the motor and the breast friction losses occurring occur in the slipping type of induction motor and these losses will be zero at the start and as the motor gains speed these losses increases but in three phase induction motor we know the speed of the induction motor remains constant almost remains constant therefore these losses that is the mechanical losses and the breast friction losses will also remain almost constant so this is about your constant losses now let us discuss about the variable losses which can be determined by the block rotor test so the variable losses can also be called as to be copper losses and these losses occur due to the current flowing in the stator winding as well as in the rotor winding so these current which is flowing in the stator winding and the rotor winding keeps on changing as you vary the load which is connected to the shaft as you vary the load which is connected to the shaft changes the current flowing through the stator winding and the rotor winding also changes and as the variable losses that is a, we are calling it as variable losses since because these current will keep on varying as you keep on varying the load 
so therefore we are considering these copper losses as the variable losses as the load keeps on changing the current keeps on changing and thereby these losses keeps on changing therefore the name variable losses is given to this kind of losses and uh, the basic function of the induction motor is to convert the electrical energy to mechanical energy electrical energy to the mechanical energy now let us say a three phase ac supply is given to the stator of the three stator of the three phase induction motor so if i call pn is the power p i n is a power input and this will be equal to root 3 vl i n into cos phi where cos phi is the power factor of the induction motor and vl is the line voltage and i l is the line current so this is the power input and uh, we will be witnessing there are several stages during this conversion from electrical energy to mechanical energy and these conversion through several stages can be represented by a power flow diagram so let us see what is the power flow diagram from the power input to the power output so if i say the here this is my power input then this can be again split into two powers so this power input has to feed your state of losses that is state of iron losses as well as copper losses and again here you are having the input to the rotor this is your rotor input and again the rotor input has to feed the rotor copper losses and here you are having the mechanical power develop so this is your developed mechanical power and here here you are having the rotor copper losses now we do not consider the rotor core losses as we have seen that the frequency of the rotor will be of very small value that is 1.5 hertz therefore we can neglect the rotor core losses and let us consider only the rotor copper losses now again this mechanical power developed can be fed to the load by the shaft so now again when it is feeding to the load again we are having the friction and the windage losses the friction and the windage losses and here i am having the power output so this is basically how the power con conversion is going through first you are giving the power that is three phase ac supply to a stator and uh, this then you are having the stator iron losses and the copper losses as well as rotor input so the now the rotor input the power is going to feed your rotor copper losses and it will generate the mechanical power from the electrical power and from there this mechanical power can be fed to the load by the shaft and again you are having the friction and windage losses of the shaft and one side you are having a power output so this is the output which you are getting and from the power input now the rotor efficiency of the motor so the rotor efficiency can be given by the rotor efficiency can be given. if i say the mechanical power developed is pm and the, the rotor power losses is pcu so your pcu will be equal to 3 into i2 square into r2 where i2 is the rotor current during the running condition and r2 is the rotor resistance so this is the pm and this is p uh, pin and this i am saying the rotor input as p2 so your rotor efficiency will be given by the gross mechanical power pm by the power that the rotor input that is p2 and if i say the efficiency of the whole induction motor that is the efficiency of your induction motor can be given by that is the p output or you can say the shaft output to the p input so this is basically the losses and the efficiency of your induction motor so i hope you understood well please subscribe to the channel thank you